Good morning, students. Thank you for joining for our final lesson in our Farm to School Nutrition and Agriculture lesson series. Over the course of the past four lessons, we've talked about my plate and the food groups, the six parts of the plant, pollinators, and the nutrient cycle. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Wisconsin food traditions and traditions that our families have, because we know that everybody eats different foods in their own families. As a little recap from last week, we talked about the nutrient cycle. The nutrient cycle describes how our nutrients move through in a cyclical form and they have different steps along the way. We talked about how decomposers, like worms, break apart our food, eat it, and then poop it out as compost. The compost provides great nutrients for our soil that allows plants to take up those nutrients and to grow and produce really great fruits and vegetables for us to then enjoy. We also talked about when composting is possible and when things actually have to be thrown in the trash. I really hope you learned something in this last lesson about how you can make a difference in keeping our planet safe and healthy for us to enjoy for many years to come. Well, let's move into our lesson for today. To get started, we're gonna watch this video about what the world eats for breakfast. While you're watching it, just think about if you eat any of these foods, maybe you eat them for breakfast, maybe you eat them from different meals of the day, and think about how you would like to enjoy your breakfast. As a, um, Warning, there is no sound in this video, so just know that there isn't gonna be any sounds. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that video. Maybe you saw some foods that you do eat for breakfast. Maybe you saw some foods that you eat for other meals of the day. The awesome thing about the United States is that we are a melting pot of cultures from all around the world. So even right here in Madison, we have so many different restaurants and people from so many different areas of the world that we are able to enjoy a lot of these foods in our day-to-day -day life. So moving on to more of the Wisconsin food traditions, take a moment and think to yourself if you can think of any special Wisconsin foods. These can be foods that are produced here or foods that are grown here. So just take a minute and think about that to yourself. Okay, so I've put together a few examples of some foods that I think are special here in Wisconsin that I'll go over with you. Our first one is venison, which is deer meat. This might be unfamiliar to a lot of you, but in Wisconsin, we have a huge population of people who hunt during the colder months of the year. And primarily, they hunt for deer. And then deer meat, venison, can be turned into steaks, it can be turned into burgers, it can be turned into jerky. And this is a really great way to enjoy meat but have a lower impact on the environment because you're actually looking 
and going out and getting your own meat for your family. The second example I have is a Friday night fish fry. So this is um, something that stems from more of a religious tradition that has kind of overtaken the whole state. So in certain religions of Christianity, like Catholicism, during the season of Lent, people don't eat meat on Fridays. So instead they enjoy fish. And because the original people that moved to Wisconsin many, many years ago were primarily Catholic, restaurants began to adopt a Friday fish fry meal. So now almost any restaurant that you go to in Wisconsin, including Culver's, serves fish on Friday to be welcoming to people who don't eat meat. And then maybe even in your cafeteria, you might have fish sticks on Friday. My next food is something called sauerkraut. And sauerkraut is a German food that was brought to Wisconsin a couple hundred years ago when our German ancestors moved here. Sauerkraut is pickled or fermented cabbage. So maybe you've tried cabbage before. Sauerkraut is what happens when you add vinegar and a few other seasonings and kind of let it sit in a jar for a while and allow it to ferment and it turns into sauerkraut. This has a pretty strong flavor, so it might not be for everyone, but it's definitely something you should give a try if you ever have the opportunity. My next example are brats. Brats are sausages, similar to hot dogs, but a little bit different. They're a little bit bigger and a little bit denser. And these are also a German food. Some people even eat sauerkraut on top of their brats. And a really cool fact about Madison is that we have the world's largest brat fest festival that happens here every year. So you have the opportunity to try some really tasty brats in your own hometown. My next example is something called Booyah. And I have lived in Wisconsin my entire life and I actually have never had the opportunity to try this yet. So Booyah is a stew that you serve with a large group of people. Maybe you're having a family reunion and every person brings a different food with them to enjoy the family reunion. You're going to put that ingredient into this giant kettle over a fire and let it cook for a long time. And then you enjoy your soup or stew or booyah with your entire family. This would be a really fun activity for your class to do or even to do maybe like on a field trip. And then of course my final example are dairy products. Wisconsin is America's dairy land. We produce so much cheese and milk here and so many other dairy products. Take a moment and think to yourself if you know of a dairy product that we produce here in Wisconsin. Whatever you're thinking of, we probably do produce. Maybe our most famous one here in Wisconsin are cheese curds. Cheese curds are such a special Wisconsin food that you really can't even find them anywhere else in the U.S. Even if you travel to Illinois, Minnesota, or Michigan, the states that border Wisconsin, you might not be able to find cheese curds there. Cheese curds can be eaten fresh like this or breaded and deep fried, and they can be in yellow or white varieties depending on the type of cheese used. And maybe if you've tried fresh cheese curds, you felt that little squeak on your teeth. It's kind of fun. Then Wisconsin state pastry is the Kringle. This might be something that some of you know about, but maybe some of you have never tried it. This is a very large pastry. It's something you would share with your entire family or your entire class. And Racine, Wisconsin, which is um, down south of Milwaukee near the Illinois border, is the largest producer of Kringle in the U.S. And Kringle was actually brought over from Denmark, a European country, to Wisconsin many, many years ago. And it's our Wisconsin state pastry. So now let's move into the Wisconsin crops. The examples that I just showed you are more of foods that are produced here, but we do have lots of foods that we grow in Wisconsin. So take a moment, think to yourself if you know of any foods that we grow here in Wisconsin. The first one I want to share with you are cranberries. Wisconsin is the world's largest producer of cranberries. So if you've seen those ocean spray commercials or you've ever had cranberries for breakfast or lunch, those were probably grown right here in Wisconsin. So cranberries grow on tiny little bushes that are really low to the ground. Think if you're a farmer, would you want to pick up every single one of these tiny cranberries off of a bush on the ground? No, that'd be a lot of work. So what farmers do is they have their cranberry bog, which is kind of like a large field that cranberries grow in, and they flood it, meaning they add so much water that the water can no longer be absorbed by the ground, so it floods the field. 
And then after the field has flooded, all of the cranberries will float up to the top. And then the farmer can use a machine or a net or something to scoop up all of the cranberries. This is much easier than picking every cranberry individually. And it's a really awesome way to harvest cranberries. And yeah, that farmer actually is standing in a water field of cranberries. We also grow some other fruits here in Wisconsin. Some examples are apples, cherries, and strawberries. And what's cool about these fruits is that you're actually able to pick them yourself. You could go to an orchard or a strawberry field and pick up apples or strawberries with your family or with your friends, or maybe even on a class field trip. And then you can turn them into foods you eat at dinner time, or maybe a dessert like a pie, or maybe even a jam. There's so many ways to enjoy them. We also grow vegetables here in Wisconsin. I know a lot of you might be thinking of corn as an example, but corn really is grown all over the entire United States. So we have some other vegetables that are more specific to Wisconsin. And I know that sometimes when we eat a vegetable, it doesn't look like how it grows in the field. So I want you guys to take a moment and try and guess if you can figure out which picture corresponds to which vegetable. The options are potatoes, snap peas, green beans, cabbage, or carrots. So take a moment and see if you can match the word to the picture that it is. Okay, I'll do the big reveal now. I hope you guys got some of them right. So our first one is cabbage. And remember, this is what cabbage looks like before it turns into sauerkraut, which is one of our special Wisconsin foods. Here we have potatoes. This one is green beans. These are carrots and this is snap peas. So this might be a surprise to some of you. And I know that it's sometimes hard to tell what our foods are when we just see them growing in the fields because they look much different when they show up on our lunch tray or at home or even in the grocery store. So our next topic for our Wisconsin food traditions are the indigenous food traditions that have been here many, many years before us. Before the United States and Wisconsin were colonized, there were already indigenous people living here and working on the land. And they have their own ways of farming and foods that they grew. And some of these foods are still being grown today by indigenous groups. The first one is called wild rice. And the indigenous or Ashinabi word for this is mamunin. And this rice is all different types of colors. You might be familiar with eating white rice. Well, wild rice, one color is black, but there's also so many other different colors of it because it's wild. And how the indigenous people farm this is they get into canoes and they go through a field that is filled with water, similar to our cranberries, and use a stick to whack the wild rice down and then harvest it and put it into their boats. This is a very tasty and nutrient dense food that is really, really great to eat. Another indigenous food that is grown or maybe harvested here in Wisconsin is maple syrup. And I apologize, I do not know how to pronounce this word. So maple syrup is from maple trees. You put buckets like these and a spigot in maple trees and pull out the sap of a maple tree. And the sap at first is very clear liquid. And then what you do is you boil it and boil it and boil it until you have a liquid that looks like this, kind of amber in color. And so you might have a full bucket full of sap and only be able to produce like an inch of this bottle of maple syrup. So you really have to tap a lot of trees to be able to fill an entire bottle. And if any of you have ever had real maple syrup, it tastes much different than the maple syrup you have in the lunchroom. It's very tasty. And this is a great activity to do in the winter in Wisconsin. One of the things to get us outside and enjoying the snow or the winter time. Another indigenous food that's more of a United States food in general, not just a Wisconsin food, is popcorn. So maybe you've seen pictures of popcorn that are multicolored before, but most likely when you eat corn, it's just a yellow color. But there actually is so many different varieties of corn that can be in all different colors. And how it was originally popped is put into maybe a kettle or some kind of bag over a fire and popped with the, with the fire popping it. And then you get a delicious popcorn like this that you can eat plain or add spices to. And this is probably doesn't have butter or salt. It probably tastes a lot different than popcorn you've had in the movie theaters or in your own homes. And then finally, the indigenous groups had their own way of farming too. And this was called Three Sisters Gardening. 
And in this form of gardening, they had three crops, corn, beans, and squash, that grew together and all helped each other to produce high yields and have a low impact on the environment. So the first crop to be planted was corn. And corn was grown and it grows very tall. You've all seen corn growing, it grows very tall. And this offered a way for the beans to trellis or grow around them. Because beans, they can't grow by themselves without having something to hold on to. So generally you would have to put a stake into the ground or maybe some kind of wire. But if you grow the beans around the corn, the corn is able to wrap, the beans are able to wrap around the corn and grow very well. And then the beans, they put nitrogen back into the soil. And if you remember from our nutrient cycle lesson, nitrogen is one of the really important nutrients for our plants to be able to eat. So when you grow beans, you don't have to add any other fertilizers to the soil because you already are putting nitrogen back into the ground. And then finally, we have our squash that grows on the bottom. And this offers shade to the soil so that weeds aren't growing. So when you grow corn, beans, and squash together, you're having a very nice little ecosystem and they all are helping each other to grow and produce the highest yield. Another thing is that when you eat corn, beans, and squash, you almost have a full my plate. The only food that's missing is a dairy. So if you eat all these foods together, you're also getting a very well-balanced diet. Okay, well now I want you to take a moment and think about some of your family's food traditions. What is a food tradition in your family? Are there foods you only get to eat on certain holidays? What kinds of foods? What holidays are they for? And if you could start a new food tradition with your family, what would it be? So if you're watching this video with anybody else, take a moment and talk to that person about some of the food traditions that you have. I'll give you an example. My family is Catholic, so we celebrate Christmas. And every year on Christmas, we have a big dinner of ham and mashed potatoes, and we usually enjoy some Christmas cookies too. So that's just one example. Take a moment and think to yourself if you have any special foods you like to have with your family. Okay, and then moving into our activity. If you have access to any popcorn at home or some spices, take, take some time and do this activity. Otherwise, just think about it and then maybe try it some other time. So like I said, popcorn is one of the indigenous foods that is native to America. And popcorn also comes from corn that is grown here in Wisconsin. So corn could be a local snack that you could enjoy. So when you pop it with air, instead of in the microwave or with oil and butter, you produce a very different taste that doesn't really have much flavor, but it allows the opportunity to try lots of different flavors on your popcorn. So if you're able, pop some popcorn and then do a taste test, trying as many different spices and, as you can. And this gives you the opportunity to try flavors that maybe you've never tried before. So before you get worried that you're gonna be trying spicy foods, a spice is actually something that comes from a non-leafy part of a plant, like roots, bark, berries, flowers, seeds, and so on. So they're not actually spicy, they're more of just a flavor. And then herbs are the leaves of a plant, like rosemary, sage, thyme, oregano, and cilantro. And then when you add different spices or herbs together, you create a seasoning that gives your food some flavor. So if you're doing this activity, Think about which flavors you like the best, which ones you don't like so much. And something else I wanna to talk to you about is that these spices actually come from all over the world. So cinnamon comes from Sri Lanka. Ginger comes from India, China, and Indonesia. Curry comes from India. Paprika comes from South America. Turmeric comes from India. Black pepper comes from Vietnam and India. Garlic comes from the Mediterranean. Mustard, this comes from Canada, and then Montana and North Dakota in the United States. Cumin comes from the Mediterranean region, and onion comes from the United States. So this activity gives you the opportunity to try foods that are coming from all over the world. And these are our global food systems. Because the world is so interconnected, we are able to try foods that have come so far to us. Foods that we would have never been able to try if we didn't have things like airplanes and trains and boats that bring food from far distances. So next time you're at lunch, think about where your food came from. Is it part of a global food system or is it a local system like right here in Wisconsin, like our popcorn is? 
So that brings us to the end of our nutrition and agriculture lessons. Today we learned about the foods that are grown and produced and produced in Wisconsin, like cranberries, cheese products, and others. We shared foods that are special to our own families, maybe traditions or cultures that we have. And we learned about how food travels from all over the world to get to us, from a local to a global food system. Thank you for joining for the past five lessons. We really hope you'll learn something new about nutrition and agriculture, and you think about where your food is coming from the next time you sit down to enjoy a meal.